to continue. Today we called you because consequent upon those consultations, my brother Raila knows I'm naming my running mate. In fact, from Mombasa he came home to try to convince me to accept his choice of our sister mother Karua. We did not agree and I said, let's sleep over it. We slept over it and last night we attended. We did not ag again agree. So this is why we agreed that you name mother and I'll name my running mate today as within so ignore the interviews and what are <laughs> the issue was Raila and me and my brothers the President Uhuru and my brother Gideon Moy. So it so happens that my name as we speak is before the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission as a presidential candidate for WIPA Democratic Movement. And, and that is a legal position. I know some people have expressed doubts about what can happen. Uh, to be honest with you, I'll be very frank and open. Even if Oka had not been messed up under this legal situation, I would have convinced my brother Gideon to be my running mate. I can tell you that. I still may have to. <laughs> I say, the, the way forward is open. Very open. And I'm going to lead in bringing this country together. Some people have and mis very mistakenly argued. Oh no, this is going to take us back to 2007. If you are that type of a Kenyan, um, allow me to say, shame on you, with a lot of respect. And you want this country to go back to post-election violence of 2007? Why don't you, even if you want to be tempted to think that way, why don't you give me credit that I actually brought order to the country and stop the killing? And stop the killing. And ask yourself whether there was any killing at the strongholds of ODM Kenya at we, as, then, as we then were before it became Wiper Democratic Movement. We saved literally this country. I'm quite sure we won't go that way again because we'll be winning this time. This time we're winning. This party has grown in leaps and bounds. As I speak to you, we have a candidature of about 106 members of parliament from across the country, from Moyale to Lunga Lunga, and from Dadaab to Kisi. This is a national movement. If, as I speak to you, we are the third largest political party in during the 12th My prayer and hope is that you are going to be either number one or number two. We will compete with our friends in coming and others. So, uh, what are the decisions about to take are to take into account the future of these candidates. 22 senatorial candidates, 11 governors, over nearly 400 MCS. If I just wound up and said, Koheria Konana, I devalue the ticket that you've been given. And one still, by devaluing the same, others will take advantage and move into the party strongholds and make you look funny. I'm there to make sure you remain solid and dignified. I think that was uh, some very brief remarks. So that Kenyans know, that's why I say relax. There's no hostility here. This is brotherly contest <laughs> and others. But as you move on, we'll keep reviewing uh, our position. But if I live in this country, if people are saying, strength of Mount Kenya region, lower eastern, I don't know which other part, they are going to be shocked. I am from a mountain on the eastern side. <laughs> Actually neighbor to Professor Kevore Kendiki, whom I've mentored, a wonderful young Kenyan. Professor Kendiki, I actually appointed him uh, Secretary to Ministry of Constitutional Affairs, where our founding uh, uh, Secretary General 
the late Mutula Kelonzo Jr. Mutula and Timbiki were very closely together. And so, he did his best. I wish him well. You meet this country, it's our business. You're going to unite. So, uh, if, if, if the other side, uh, Kwanza or something, had given it to Professor Kivure, he would have given it to me. Because it's, we're just divided by River Tana. <laughs> and so I'm saying from the eastern side of the mountain, they'll be shocked if I beat them completely in the mountain. <laughs> Some of them said, uh, I said I'm a Kikui, I'm going to say a Kikui or something. But the truth of the matter is I understand every Kikui word you speak. And it is not because I learned it, but because it is the way it is. You pick it. The same, the same kind of uh, conversation. So I do not bore you. Allow me then to now give you my nomination as my running mate. During the August, <laughs> during the August 20, 2022, August 9 election, I am pleased to introduce my brother into the Taper Sunkuli. Aha! What is my coffee? Aha! But who is Andrew Letepa Sunkuli? You may wish to ask me. You congratulate him later. I'm not through with him. I'm not through with him yet. Andrew is a 59-year-old native of Narok County with a zest for life and community service. Is a Life and career is underpinned by desire to transform the lives of ordinary people. As a grassroots community leader, he has a conviction that through education and empowerment, any individual household can rise to their full potential regardless of where they start their lives from. And please accept that he's a member of the Mark community. One community that have been marginalized from the colonial times up to now the business center <laughs> because it is their land what um, is uh, academic history reads as follows from May 1985 to May 1988 now I actually read in the first person singular I undertook my undergraduate studies at Kenyatta University in Nairobi uh, where I graduated with a bachelor's degree in education with majors in education. took me on a journey through psychology, statistics, history of education, a broad variety of literary geni genius and regional literatures, the history, structure and usage of the English language as well as the practical skills of teaching and classroom delivery. He's an accomplished teacher. Give him a clap for it. In February 1982, November to, to November 83, Kenya for my advanced level high school education, where I majored in English, divinity, and Kiswahili, which is a language spoken by 200 million people in Eastern Africa and I graduated with top scores. I wish it was me, but it's in the first person singular. January 78 to November 81, I attended Kilgore Secondary School in Kenya. I completed my certificate of secondary education 
with a Division I score and emerging the top student that year in the entire province. Um, in 1988 to December 88, I was employed by the National Teacher Service Commission and posted to a prestigious high school known as Kabarak High School, where I had a short stint as a teacher of literature and English language. I actually interrogated him, Brother Giddy, on this matter uh, under a tree. I asked him to, he's a literature student myself, and I remember some of the set pieces. I gave him um, one of um, the, the soliloquies in the Shakespearean um, tragedies. And it started like this. Um, um, one of those serious soliloquies. He says, um, Time is out of joint, O oh, cursed spite, that I was born to set it right. Uh, he goes on to say, You know, now I imagine if you're in Kenya today, wouldn't you think? that time, like Shakespeare would have said, is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite. And then I wanted to say, because he was considering committing suicide, whether it is more honorable in the heart to suffer the slings of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. I asked him, which of the Shakespearean tragedies was that? Eh, he had to Google a little bit. <laughs> he ended up with Hamlet. He's an accomplished literature teacher. And that is what actually gave me myself the necessary backing to study law at the University of Nairobi. So I find a lot in common. And that is, gentlemen, I don't want to bore you with a lot of these things um, about him. Uh, January 74, director, chairman, and chief of a number of companies and organizations as follows. I founded the led and led the East African Leadership Center as executive chairman. Center was established to provide leadership training to middle level managers of private for profit and uh, not for profit organizations. With a staff of 30, we had a thoroughput of 600 individuals in those nine years. My responsibilities including, included providing team leadership, ensuring the center stuck to its vision and co mandate and overseeing all the key business processes. The East Africa Leadership Center was later sold to other investors. As the ELC was a small outfit, its salary stayed between $1,500 to $2,000 per month. Now, this tells you he knows how to begin humble. And my brother, uh, should you become the president of the republic, do not look at exhaustive numbers compared to this. Even And if you find you're earning so much, oh, and of course the thing I'll tell you as your leader is you will never steal because stealing will, will militate against all that, what you try to do in, in trying to set up uh, those, uh, uh, those qualities. January 2001 to 2003, while I was executive chairman of the East Africa Leadership Center, he served as a board director for Kenya Post Authority, that is KPA, having been appointed to that position by the President of the Republic at the advice of the Minister in Charge of Sports and National Transportation. The KPA Authority is a large public sector organization with 7,000 employees and a fairly profitable record. As director, he chaired two subcommittees of the board, namely procurement and human resources. And as chair of UHSHR subcommittee, he led efforts to eliminate an actual deficit of over 100 million shillings, or dollars, I beg your pardon, which had nearly crippled the staff, staff patient fund. He left the board voluntarily due to pressure of new assignments. And 203 to 206, was Chief Executive Officer and Principal Owner of Rappers Publishing, a company a friend and I established to help the government of Rwanda.